TCU won. Who won the Georgia Ohio State game? Ooh, okay. Uh, very, very thankful for our fans who showed up, and you know, I thought their energy really gave us a boost when uh, we didn't necessarily start the way we wanted to, and and that was not our fault. That was all credit to West Virginia. I thought. Um, their speed, their athleticism, their pressure. Um, it was like nothing that we had faced yet all year long. And um, very similar to the start at LSU. And But our guys settled down and adjusted to the speed and the physicality and then started ramping it up. And so I was very proud of our composure and our, our togetherness. And I, I think, um, man, anybody who watches these guys play, can really see how much they love each other, how much they enjoy playing with each other. And uh, there, there's such a joyful spirit and such a calm spirit about them in, in the tensest situations. And so it's, it's really cool uh, to be around them and to work with them. Coach, does a win like this kind of set the standard for what Big 12 play is going to be like? Oh, yeah, have you watched the games today? Uh, the, I think only one road team won today. Uh, that was uh, Texas at Oklahoma by one point. You know, it's just hard to win in this league, and um, you just have to be able to do your darndest, be as prepared as possible, play as hard as you can, and if you come out on top, then you got to wash it and uh, move on to the next one. And if you don't come out on top, you have to wash it and move on to the next one. Otherwise, then you start stacking L's. So say about not only the resiliency but also just the maturity of this team to go down 14 early and, and bounce back like that um it says a lot and and we do have some very mature guys we've got some really tough kids and they are resilient and they work really really hard and um they they're, they're also um they play with emotion but they're not emotional right and so it in those, when you're down, they're never bickering at each other or they're never saying things um, to each other that, you know, like will fuel a fire. Like they're always speaking confidence to each other and uh, we got this, you know, and uh, so, so that's, that, that, that's, that's a lot of fun to coach and to be around. And playing without David tonight, did that really open the door up for Bay Bay to have a big game? Yeah, we just, you know, next guy up. You know, that, that, that's what it is. Uh, you know, Bebe was going to play, and um, Ish and Taiki had a great week of practice. They really, we, you know, we had some meetings and, you know, just tried to be as clear with them and what I wanted from them. And they came out in practice and gave what we wanted and uh, knew we were going to play them. And the, the, the thing is, we got to build depth, right? It's, in this league, you, gotta, you just can't play with six or seven. You know, we want to get to eight, you know, maybe nine, and, you know, at times. and when you see the foul trouble and stuff. So yeah, uh, you know, not having David hurt and, but guys just stepped up and kept going. Thank you. Can we, uh, can we ask what David's injury is or is it something no comment? I don't think I'm allowed to talk about it, but it's, it wasn't season ending and uh, he's gonna work really hard and Luke and Phil do a great job. And as soon as he can be back, he's gonna be back. And then what's it like um, Marquise Noel, he had, uh, he is the record for ass, uh, assist points double double as a K Stater. What's it like to you know coach a guy that sees the floor so well? Man, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Like when you don't have to coach the ball as much, you know you can coach the other four guys out there. It, it makes life a lot, lot, lot better you know, for you as, as a coach. You know, and um, his willingness to share the ball, his willingness to learn and to grow even within the game, seeing what they were doing and how we were going to attack it. And, um, and then when they switched in the second half, their ball screen coverage, and then so then we attacked it differently. You know, uh, um, that, 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 that's a great credit to him as a player, as a person. I see Cam, uh, his defense is showing up, but his offense is not, is not quite there yet. What's he got to do? to you know, get that offense that's probably showing up in practice to show up in, on game days. Cam's gonna keep working. I think his, uh, somebody told me 
other I'm not positive on the things, but I think his his shooting percentages are up, his points and his rebounds are up, you know, from the beginning of the season. And so he's heading in the right direction. Tonight was a night where that wasn't going to be the case. The way they guard, they don't allow, you know, the second and third guard uh, perimeter guy to be involved in the offense. So you got to play three on three against him. And so his job was to stand on the next and let him deny him and create opportunities for other people. So he did his job today. And then the last one is a two-parter. Uh, what's it like? I mean, how important is it to start out 1-0 in the Big 12? And then what is the preparation going into this really tough stretch coming up, two-game stretch? Like, well, you got to win at home, OK? And that's the most important thing. You have to you know, control your home court to give you a chance in this league. And now, you know, we go on the road. But let me uh, like, what, what two teams would you have named to me, right, if it wasn't, I think, Texas and Baylor? Right? What two teams would you name and say, oh, you're going to have an easy trip? Right? There's not. It's and so lead. every every game is like, so we're not preparing for two game road, we're preparing for one game. And so tonight, we're preparing tonight for them to get to bed at a decent time, you know, and, and then do what we got to do tomorrow. Because if we don't, we have to prepare to prepare to win. And so that's that's the, the maturity this team has, that they're embracing that. Okay? And so I'm looking forward to the next thing we do. Uh, I was wondering if you could just uh, explain kind of the, the difference you saw in your team from the, the first half to the second half and um, what those changes were and maybe what some of those discussions were that you were having with your, your team. Um, you know, I don't know that like, we adjusted to the speed, right? Like if, I mean, you could practice it all the time, you know, and uh, but until you get out there and you actually feel the, the the strength, the speed, the aggressiveness which the other team plays with, you know, when when it, it just takes an adjustment period, right? And um, you know, I thought our guys adjusted, and then at the half, we uh, our staff did a great job. Coach Reem did an unbelievable job with the scout, and then uh, the rest of the staff, we looked at a few things that we could pick on. And the guys went out and executed it, and we made them switch their ball screen coverage, which then opened up some things, other things for us. And our, we were clicking so well in the man that they had to go to the zone. Part of that was because of the ball screen coverage, and part of it was the foul trouble, right? And so, and then our guys made the adjustment to the zone. And I mean, their zone stymied us, but I thought we were still able to get some pretty decent looks. How did you feel your defense played tonight, and how did your defense keep you in the game, especially there in that first half? Well, I thought we guarded the first shot well, and uh, we just, I mean, they killed us on the glass. They just absolutely killed us on the glass. And so we're going to have to, you know, go back to the drawing board and figure out some things and, and see, see what we can do better. And, um, but I thought our first shot defense was really good, and I thought we pressured them. Coach, you talked about that you had trouble on the glass tonight. Um, <clears throat> they got better in the second half. What was your message just in that part of the game? All five guys had the rebound. Um, we kind of won the double team, the big fella. I, it, it's, um, so sometimes your scheme in stopping the first shot allows teams to get a second shot. So if you're fronting the post so they can't throw it into them, then you're out of position if somebody shoots it to get the rebound. And so we had to send a second guy to help with that. And you know that, that kind of helped. A little bit there, but I mean, they. Uh, Emmett Matthews is listed like at six six or somewhere, but he's not. He's six nine, and he's probably seven two long. And then uh, the the Wagyu kid. I mean, how long is he? And they and how big? And they are huge, right? So, I mean, we we needed to go. Guards had to help us rebound. They had to go stick their nose in there and go get it with two hands. And um, and the guys just kept fighting. What is it like, uh, especially in your first Big 12 game, playing, stacking up against a Hall of Fame coach like Bob Huggins? Um, and have you talked to him a lot at all and taken any words, I, words of advice or anything? I, I absolutely love Coach Huggins. Uh, as an assistant, um, Coach Huggs never, like, big time me. You know, like he, was, he was just always so kind. And he treated Scott. Um, he was one of the first coaches in the league that I thought, like, really honored Scott. Um, in how he talked about him and 
and stuff. And that was that was really cool to see that. And um, so so I, I love Coach Huggins and Coach Harrison and that, that whole staff. I think they do an unbelievable job. I would let my son play for him, you know, and uh, I think it's, you know, long overdue him being put in the Hall of Fame. And uh, his teams are very hard to play against. And so um, just, just appreciate him. Wrote him a, a note, sent him a little gift to the hotel last night, hoping I could, like, soften him up a little bit, but it didn't work. <laughs> Hey, man. Thank you, guys. Happy New Year to you.